Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be talking about the ways that you can set up two monitors to take advantage of Lightroom's dual monitor solution. When we created the ability to show Lightroom on two monitors, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just allowing you to maybe put palettes or something from one monitor to another. We really wanted to add a lot more features and functionality. So we're going to be walking through three different scenarios that really take advantage of the power here. So the first thing that I'll do is invoke this secondary monitor, and I'll do that by clicking on this little two icon down here in the lower left of Lightroom. Because I have a second monitor hooked up, we can automatically see the options over here on the other monitor. Now, because I was in grid view on my primary monitor, and by the way, it doesn't matter which one's your primary or secondary, if I wanted to, I could select by just clicking on the menu bar here, and I can actually drag this to my secondary monitor if I wanted to. But for now, I'll go ahead and just leave it alone, but you should know that you can swap them. But by default, because I'm in the grid view on my primary monitor, Lightroom automatically took me to the loop view. So this is a great way to review your images. When you click on an image in grid view on your primary, you get a larger view over here on your secondary monitor. And of course, I can zoom in, I can pan around and take a, take a good look at that image, and then I can click again to zoom out. And of course, you can do more than that as well. If I had two images that I wanted to look at at the same time, I can move over to the compare view. You can see here I've got the options of grid, loop, compare, and survey. One of the nice things is, is that they actually have the same keyboard shortcuts as your primary monitor, only you add the shift key. So as long as I know G for grid, E for loop, C for compare, and N for survey mode, just adding the shift key, so shift C, would take me right to compare. So I don't really have to learn anything new. All I have to remember is to add the shift key. Of course, once I'm in compare mode, I can go ahead and zoom in. Now, these are going to be locked, so as I move around and pan on one image, they'll both pan together. But a lot of times, when you're taking multiple images, maybe the person's moved a little bit, and so you might want to unlock the two views here, and then you can come over and pan them independently. So this is an excellent way to check focus while you're reviewing your images. Okay, there's another option that I want to point out, but I need to go back to loop view in order to do it. And that's the options over here on the right hand side. You can see that we're set to normal right now. And what that means is that whenever I click on an image in my primary monitor, it will display that on my secondary monitor. If I decide to change this to the live view, now wherever I position my cursor, I don't have to click and it will automatically display that on the secondary monitor. Even if I were to come down here to the film strip, any image that I roll over will automatically be sent to that secondary monitor. So it's a little bit more interactive. But if it bothers you that it's always changing, you can just set it back to normal. We also have the locked option, but we're going to take advantage of that in our third scenario. So hold on for that. All right, let's move to the second scenario. The second scenario might come in really handy, let's say, if you are trying to make two images have the same look and feel. So I've selected them here while I'm in the library, but I'm going to tap the D key to go into the develop module. Now, instead of just seeing this single image here, I would like to look at both of those images that I've selected. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut C for compare, but I'll add the shift key. Remember, because I'm on the secondary monitor. So shift C now puts these into compare. This one obviously is zoomed up. So I'll go ahead and just zoom out a little bit so that I can see the entire image. All right, now I can see them next to each other. I could also do this in survey if I prefer, which would be shift N to go to survey mode. And as I click one image or the other, you can see that it's automatically targeted in the develop module. So now let's say I want to make some adjustments to this image. I'm going to boost the exposure a little bit. I'm also going to drag the black slider to the right a bit. I might get rid of that kind of bluish color cast by just using my white balance eyedropper and clicking in the sky. And let's say we want to add a vignette, maybe a black edge. You know what? I also want to change the color a little bit. So let's scroll up here. 
I want to make this look a little bit more aged, so I'll select the Age photo from the Lightroom presets. Now, we can see that every time I make a change here in the Develop module, it's being updated over here in Survey View. So now, if I switch to the second image, I can make updates to it over here in the Develop module and watch interactively how it relates to my other image that I have selected. So it's quite nice if you're editing a sequence of images, you can really start editing one and get the look and feel of the other one. Let me show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and use the white eyedropper here, and then let's go ahead and crop this a little bit because it's a little bit crooked. So I tap to the R key. I'm just going to straighten that a little bit. I'll also add the aged photo look to this, but you can see that this is a little bit lighter than the other one, so I'll also go in I'll change the blacks here, and as I move the slider, certainly I'm looking at this image as a reference, but I'm also viewing how it looks next to my other image. So this image is getting a little contrasty. I'll move down the recovery slider in order to kind of bring back some of that tonality in the sky. I might also bring down the exposure just a wee bit. And then when I think that they're comparable, I'll go ahead and just do that last step, which would be to add that black edge vignette. So I think you can see how having two monitors here is really going to help me get images to have the same look and feel. All right, excellent. Let's take a look at this third scenario. I'll go back to the grid view by tapping the G key. And now what I'd like to do is kind of pretend that I'm in a situation where I'm in the sales room of a studio. So I want to see the images here in the library module on the primary monitor. I want to see the images, but I want my client to see them larger. So they would actually be viewing the secondary monitor. I'd have it turned around and facing them. But I might not want them to see an image every time I click on it. So I might click on this image. It might be a portrait. In this case, it's a flower. I might not want them to see that. So how can I prevent that? Well, that is that option over here on the secondary monitor when you're in the loop view. Remember, when I'm in the loop view, I have normal, live, and then the locked feature, which we didn't talk about. I'm going to go ahead and click that on. Now, on my primary monitor, I could select an image, I could zoom into loop view, I could check focus, make sure that maybe that's the best image and that's really the image that I want to display to the client. And when I'm ready, I'll just right mouse click or control click on the Mac and then choose lock to second window and Lightroom's going to push this image to that secondary monitor. In the meantime, I could go into the develop module, I could pick another image, I could quickly change something like exposure, I could add maybe a white vignette around it. I can do all of this interactive work. My client's not seeing it because they're only going to be able to see the image when I right mouse click and say lock to second window. So as you can see, in Lightroom, the use of two monitors is really quite powerful. Now, one last little thing, one last scenario for those of you who are like me at home, I actually only have one monitor, but that's okay. It's a large monitor, and I actually take advantage of this dual monitor solution on my single monitor by simply dragging this header bar right here and putting both of the windows on a single monitor. Right? So I can go ahead and resize these down, and that way I can take advantage of the fact that one of my windows can be showing something like the grid view, while in the other one I'm in loop view or I'm in compare or survey. So you don't necessarily have to have two monitors in order to take advantage of the power of the dual monitor solution in Lightroom. Well, excellent. That wraps up this episode of The Complete Picture. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Julianne Koss, and I hope to see you again here on Adobe TV.